Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. And Christmas is over now, and New Year's is in a couple of days, and I figured it just might be fun to make a compilation video of some of my favorite finds for each month of the year, starting in January, February, March, April, May, June, all the way through till now. So kind of a highlights year in review of 2022. Thank you for being uh, loyal subscribers to the channel and if you're not make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, kick back and relax and check out some of the wild mushrooms that we've come across here on mushroom wonderland um, over the past 12 months and uh, you know enjoy <music> January 2022. Sounds good. 2022. It's going to be our year. All right, let's go check it out. Come on. See these? See this guy? This is a, an elfin saddle, right? So this is known as a Helvella Vespertina, or the, or the elfin saddle, reported to be edible. And uh, they're very cold resistant. Look at this. They're growing right here. Chonky. Right here in the northwest in January. See this white uh, white mycelium underneath there. Look at how this is growing, man. So this is an ascomite. Holy crap, look at this guy. The biggest Helvella Vespertina you've ever seen. So these are related to morels. They're both in the uh, uh, ascomite, ascomycete uh, family. And so they don't have pores or gills. They grow their spores just on the flesh surface of it. And look at the stem of that or the stipe. Just totally crazy looking and a beautiful name. I do think they sound a bit like a uh, Disney princess or something. Like look, at, look at how old this guy is. But very, very contorted and uh, very unique looking stipe on them, right? So that's your Helvella Vespertina, or the elephant saddle. Supposedly edible with caution. Could cause you a stomach upset. Make sure you cook it really well first. Crazy, those are some chunky ones. I usually see them quite that chunky. So come along with me, Aaron Hilliard, into Mushroom Wonderland. Let's see what's growing in February 2022. Come on. Hey, so check this out. Kind of a cool find. Did not expect to see this in February. Uh, growing right here in this mossy little forest. And these are pretty fresh and healthy. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is what is known as a lactarius mushroom. And when it's damaged, it exudes this kind of white milky latex. Uh, I talked about these on videos earlier in the season. Maybe you can see that white milkiness coming out of the gills there where I scratched it. Not too much of it, but it's got this really kind of orange peel texture on the top. And I personally, I can't smell them when they're fresh, when they're wet, but uh, it's definitely got this kind of orange color. This cap is about two inches around. That's about as big as I ever find them. Right here is a younger one. Um, so this is indicative of a lactarius mushroom or a milk cap as they're known. But this mushroom is a really sought after uh, edible and, uh, and it's got a, the smell of really sweet uh, maple syrup or molasses. This is a uh, Lactarius rubitus or the candy cap. And right here there's a few of them growing and they're really fresh and still lactating. So this tells me they are still actively growing out here in February in Washington state. So how cool is that? Some candy caps. Uh, only a few of them here so far, but I just walked into these woods, so kind of cool. I did not expect to be able to find candy caps in February in Washington. So a really neat one, good one for the basket, Lactarius rubitus. Thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you get value out of videos like this, give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a positive comment so I know what you guys want to see. And uh, thanks for joining. So let's go hit the woods and uh, see what we got growing out here in March, 2022. And this is a 
This is actually not a typical mushroom. This is a lichen that grows a little mushroom on it. How cool is that? So at the base of these is some green little balls uh, that are basically the body of the lichen. And then the lichen grows a little basidiomite looking mushroom structure to, uh, to spread spores. So what a unique thing this is. Lichenum phalia umbellifera, or the uh, lichen agaric would be the common name. Much easier to say the lichen agaric. <laughs> but uh, under, underneath each one of these fruiting bodies is a little patch of lichen on the tree. So I'm liking that. Beautiful little mushrooms. They look like they could be in a fairy tale or something like that. How cool. And you see those little rhizomorphs, the little fuzz at the bottom of the foot. That's where the lichen's growing. Amazing. How good. But uh, come with me on a walk into the forest and let's go see what kind of mushrooms are growing out here right now in April. So would you take a look at this mushroom here? This is called the Gyromitra esculenta. This is a really weird wavy looking mushroom. Let me pick this guy. Wow, this is a big one. But this is a poisonous mushroom, a false morel. So it's called a Gyromitra esculenta. So the Gyromitra esculenta, this mushroom's super common around here in the spring. And uh, esculenta, the, uh, the ancient Greek word for that actually means edible, although this is far from edible. So these are actually deadly poisonous if you were to ingest enough of them, or even to uh, inhale a lot of the spores from this mushroom could make you really sick. There's acute sickness, and then there's long-term sickness attributed to the gyromitrin in this mushroom. So when it metabolizes in the human system, it becomes a substance called monomethylhydrazine, which is effectively rocket fuel, which is not good to have in your system. So the uh, gyromitra esculenta, even though it's called the false morel, I've even heard it called the beefsteak morel. What a stupid name for a, for a poisonous mushroom because a beefsteak morel sounds like the best morel out there, if you ask me. Pretty large one. So avoid this one. Do not eat this. And uh, probably not even a good idea to collect it and have it in your basket. It's just got a lot of toxins. So I'm gonna set this one down. It's okay to handle them, but I would, uh, I would avoid uh, being in enclosed spaces with this, or if you were trying to cook it for any reason, and uh, inhaling the fumes can even make you sick. So um, the Gyromitra esculenta, we're gonna leave this behind. And we see these growing all over. Really, really common spring mushroom in the PNW. Go see what we can find growing in the beautiful forest of the Pacific Northwest. Thanks for joining. All right, so here's an interesting spring mushroom in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, this one might look a little bit familiar to you because it has these white speckles all over the top of the cap. And uh, that's what the Amanita muscaria looks like. And this is a relative of that, although this is not Amanita muscaria or the emoji mushroom or the one popularized by Mario Brothers. But uh, this mushroom is known as a panther cap. So. In the eastern part of the United States, they would call this Amanita panther, pantherina. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we call it Amanita pantheranoides. And so some of the distinguishing features is that it's going to have this brown cap, but it has these white spots all over it. And these white spots are actually remnants of this part down here. This is called the vulva. And it's kind of like a little egg that the mushroom bursts out of, and that's one thing that's unique with uh, Amanitas and so this starts out like a little egg or the uh, the vulva and then as the the mushroom bursts out of it chunks of this little material here are left stuck on the top of the cap so it's all the same material this isn't some special uh, poison or something on top of the cap but we've always been told that these are poisonous ever since we were a kid and for good reason they are poisonous uh, every field guide you'll ever read would classify these as toxic. And uh, they are a mycorrhizal mushroom, which means that they grow with the conifer trees here in the Pacific Northwest. They can associate with a lot of different trees. Um, an indicator of amanitas, it's always got these white gills underneath here. It's, uh, it's also got a ring. This is called the partial veil. And it protects these gills until the spores can mature enough and then this part will fall away. See how delicate that is. 
that means this thing is producing just millions of spores in those gills and with every tap just millions of them are going out into the air and they're, we're just surrounded with them all the time so this mushroom has already let off millions and millions of spores into the air every gust of wind there's more going by and I'm actually helping it right now to spread its spores but uh, these ones aren't considered deadly but definitely a good one to avoid although they're pretty to look at and it's okay to pick them and it's okay to touch them the Amanita pantheranoides a uh, beautiful Amanita mushroom that's fruits here in the spring in the Pacific Northwest and we're gonna leave these behind but uh but always a cool one to look at so let's keep walking just been uh, an amazing start to the morel season you know we're gonna go ahead and collect these today and uh, it's an amazing patch of morcella so definitely keep your eyes open when you're around areas that have been disturbed had uh, fires recently or um, new construction sites are a good place to look uh, urban landscaping often new wood chips will have this uh, species of morel growing in them because this, mu this mushroom acts like a saprotroph, even though it is said that it can um, get uh, mycorrhizal connections with some of the trees, uh, but it doesn't ne necessarily have to. It just loves whatever's going on here. So today we're gonna collect these, get them in the basket, and we've got some beautiful black morels. These uh, could possibly be synonymous with uh, the Marcella elata that um, is also found in Europe and uh, around the world. Um, it would be interesting to do a genetic study on them, but uh, a bunch of amazing mushrooms. They're a little bit sandy, so we're going to try our best to clean these off with compressed air later, but I'm going to cut these and collect them up and uh, see what we can do with them. So these are known as the inconsiderate morel because they just pop up like this and they take over people's fire pits. How dare they? So somebody's got to come along and take care of them, get them out of there, eradicate them. So that's what I'm here to do. So I'll harvest this big one right here. I'm gonna cut it off at the base. And when I cut this guy in half, it's gonna be hollow in the center. That's how you know it's a true Morcella. You see that? Beautiful. So this is Morcella importuna, or the inconsiderate morel. Very delicious morel. Great one for gathering for the table. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland and today it's the 16th of July, 2022. And look at what we got right down here. It's a perfect example of our summer chanterelles. So see how they've got that really lighter color? Look at that. There's your beautiful Cantharellus formosus. They're all basically the same color underneath the cap as they are on top of the cap. So these ones have decurrent veins. So we're not even gonna call them gills, but these are called decurrent. See how they run down the stem like this? They don't stop in a very obvious straight line. So these are called decurrent and many mushrooms share that trait, but especially cantharellus, they're all gonna have that 
the current vein pattern. And so if they do not have that or if it's questionable, I would uh, make sure to research really closely what you have there. But these are a beautiful example of summer chanterelles. Um, the stem is solid. And if you were to bend and break this by hand, it'll actually kind of string off like string cheese. Um, the cap margin, so that's the edge of the cap here. It's always very um, undulate, so it's it's wavy, you know, all the way around there. Pretty irregular shape. Then as they get bigger, they take on kind of a vase shape. So very common morphology for a young chanterelle right here. If this had buckets and buckets of rain like we get in October, this thing would be huge. But this is about as big as it's going to get. I don't see summer chanterelles getting too much bigger than this. That's a pretty, whoops, that's a pretty hefty summer chanterelle. So, beautiful. So I got a brown paper bag with me so these mushrooms can breathe a little bit. I didn't bring a basket today. But uh, basically, I just want to make sure that we get all the dirt off of them. So you can kind of do this sort of like you might do to a bolete because you want to save all of this all the meat that you can from these. And it's okay to pick them when they're this small. Believe it or not, these have already produced millions of spores that have flown out into the air off of these veins. And the uh, truth is, they just don't, they just won't get much bigger than this, this time of year. Look at those. Very nice. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, this is a good example. Look at the spores, all the white spores all over the ground right there. So this thing has been dropping a ton of spores. Beautiful spore fall right there. Oh, look at this. Wow. We're in the money today. These are definitely some of the bigger ones that I found today. Look at these. And there's just white spores everywhere. So if you have any worry about them being too young, they have put spores everywhere out here. So beauties. Beauty. we got a pretty nice sack of golden chanterelles going now. So that's super exciting. We found a ton of summer chanterelles. I mean, by summer chanterelles standards, that's kind of a ton, like probably over a pound of them. Um, late August, we're almost to September, and we've had such little amount of rain, but that hasn't stopped specific species of mushrooms from growing. Today, I'm going to be showing you a, what is uh, known as a, a lobster mushroom so there's one growing right here you can see all this white it's actually spores from hypomyces lactiflorum is a scientific name of what's making this mushroom bright orange you see that look at that I pulled that right out of the moss so this is what's known as a lobster mushroom look how bright orange and red almost purplish that is this one is old, so this has actually been growing for weeks here, and it's just hollow with worm holes. But this is actually a combination of two different mushrooms. Oh, there's maggots and flies coming out of this thing, so pretty gnarly. I'm going to set this down and flip the camera around so you can see it. There you go. So there's actually two different mushrooms growing out of this situation. There's a, a, what's known as a host. And then the parasite. So the host is known as Russula brevipes, a very common, big, plain, white mushroom that grows here uh, and grows all across the country, really, and around the world. Um, it's edible, but really boring. In Russia, they, they do like to eat the Russula brevipes. They 
they will pickle it and can it. Here we don't find uh, much desire in it because it is so plentiful, especially when the rain starts. But what's curious is I don't see them growing anywhere in the dry part of August, uh, like right now. But they were growing underneath the moss here where they were attacked by this parasite known as Hypomyces lactiflorum. And this, this entire mushroom then becomes parasitized. It turns orange. The gills kind of just get so contorted and consumed with the parasite that you can't even really decipher that this was a Russell abrevipes at one point. Uh, now it is just called Hypomyces lactiflorum. What we're really after is the rind on this. So... So the white part, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bury this guy back up and let, let the spores go back to the forest. But I do see another one right over here. So let's take a look. Pretty hard to spot, but look at that. Really, really sporulated out. So all that white, all this white stuff are, are actually spores, billions of spores. For the hypomyces lactiflorum, look at that. And there's your lobster mushroom, and uh, and it is just so many spores. It's it's like it's trying to grow mycelium right here. Um, all kinds of you know activity happening in here. This is this is pretty awesome. This is uh this really is like a whole little microcosm of mycological activity right here. So we've got mycelium growing from the spores. And this is all myceliated, and it's hard for me to tell you definitively that this is the spore is from the Russell abrevipes, or if it's from the Hypomyces lactiflorum. Um, would be curious to know, but I think that those spores are actually the Hypomyces spores. So, so this is a spot where these mushrooms reoccur every year, and this is this is too old. This is no good to eat. Look inside of here. We've got all kinds of uh, you know wormholes and bugs inside there but this is extremely parasitized and this is really kind of a mixed forest i'm actually on the uh you know there's large mature um uh western hemlock and doug fir pseudosugo mensesii right here and and uh, these are all western hemlock and so these mushrooms are growing in a mycorrhizal association with the trees around here now they're not in association with these alder trees see these hardwood trees these are red alder so these are growing attached on the roots of some of these larger um conifers check this out right down here beautiful there's a couple look at these gorgeous gorgeous Lobster mushrooms, beautiful. I'm gonna take those home. Dude, that was the super score on these three. Didn't really expect that. So we got a couple of the older ones, but these ones are extra choice. So they're coming in my handy dandy little foraging bag. I got my cool little knife and uh, what a find. What an amazing amazing find today didn't really expect that it's late uh september here in washington state you see this thing growing right alongside the trail there's a beautiful dyeing mushroom so people use this to dye um, protein fabrics like wool and silk this one is known as the velvet footed packs look at this it's like velvet on its foot that's why they would call it that and then pax comes from the genus that it used to be in paxillus but now it's actually in turbinillus so this is turbinillus uh, I'm sorry, Tapanilla, Tapanilla atrotamentosa, not to be confused with turbinillus like the uh, like the false uh, woolly chanterelle. But this one can be used for dyeing. People really like these mushrooms, so I'm going to take it home and add it to my dyeing mushrooms uh, collection, which uh, is just a pile of mushrooms in the back of my garage that are drying out on some tote lids. So there you go. Today I'm just going to go take a foray through the forest, just me and my dog, and we're going to just look at mushrooms in the woods. Oh dude, I just came across a super interesting, cool mushroom. You guys will be excited to see this one. And these ones pop up here now and then, here in the PNW, and this one is known as Hynellum pecii, or the bleeding tooth fungi. This also has a common name, strawberries and cream, because it looks like some kind of a Danish pastry. Yeah, so check this guy out. This is called Hydnellium pecii, or the bleeding tooth fungus. It was a, 
It was actually named after a famous mycologist named Charles Horton Peck in the 1920s. Um, it's also been called Hydnellum Diabolus, and that is Hydnellum Devil. And uh, somebody thought that was pretty evil, but the truth is, this mushroom is not toxic, but it is a lot like cork or something, so certainly something you wouldn't want to eat. And if you look, there's these little red driplets. And when I touch one, it just kind of smears. And I guess you could say it looks a little like blood. But let's see what it tastes like. It's actually peppery. It's pretty peppery. Um, this is not a toxic mushroom, but uh, it has got this acrid, peppery taste that would turn a lot of people off. And uh, But it does have anticoagulant medicinal properties, so this mushroom could be used for medicinal purposes and uh let's flip the camera one more time we'll take a look so here's a young one and this is a good example this one's fairly young it still has this red secretion coming out of it and it's actually essentially just water that gets soaked up through the mushroom and through a pigmentation process in that mushroom it turns it red so it's not actually blood or anything it's just water and uh all right here's a good example of a young younger one and when they get older this is what they look like and it's just this big crusty brown thing you would not know that that is an older version of that well this one is pretty obvious it's starting to get pretty dark in the center there but when they're really young they're just pure white with red spots and as they mature they turn into this big ugly black brown conky thing Another feature of Hydenellum pecchii is it's got these teeth under here, kind of like a hedgehog mushroom or a sarcodon. Um, these Hydenellums, they all have these teeth hanging from the bottom. This is where the spores come from, and they fall out of these teeth, and they are caught on the wind or on wildlife, or humans or bugs or animals pick them, and they shake their spores all over the place. So. Anyways, this is a super cool mushroom. A lot of photographers after this one. And a lot of people are like, whoa, that is the weirdest mushroom in the world. And it, and it just might be one of the weirdest looking mushrooms in the whole world. And we got them growing right here in the PNW. I'm headed out on another foray. I'm going foraging for mushrooms in a conifer forest here in the great Pacific Northwest. And let's go for a walk in the forest. Come with me. I'm very hopeful that this is something good. I'm kind of excited. Ooh, I see another one popping up right over there. So I think what we have here is a pretty exciting mushroom to find. Something a lot of you people are out here looking for. So I'm gonna carefully uncover this guy. I'm gonna dig down underneath the side of this. Oh yeah. So I'm starting to see this kind of, this kind of different looking soil down here this kind of gray ashy soil so oh, I really want to get underneath it there we go see that gray ashy soil down there it's really weird I don't know if these mushrooms produce it or they just know where to find it but right here what we have is a tricholoma muriolinum or the matsutake mushroom northwest matsutake so beautiful find. So look at the bottom of it. It's got this really kind of gray ashy soil on it. And the stipe is always really tapered like that. And then it often has this kind of tan modeling on it. And um, this one is completely enclosed. It has not opened, not even a little bit. So this is what they would call a number one button. This is the ones that would fetch money at the market. Very nice. And this is in Western Washington beginning in November. These are kind of a cold loving mushroom, but here they are right now. It hasn't been too extremely cold, but, uh, but a beautiful mushroom. And if we look down in its hole, you can see there's young primordia little pins starting to grow. So I'm going to just carefully kind of cover that spot back up. Um, and then if I look just to the side of this, you can see this like a little lump in the moss here. And, uh, and this kind of usually will clue me in. Look at that. We got two more little babies. Just really young. So I'm just going to carefully cover those back up. And they're just too young to pick right yet. But I see, I do see one right here. 
And look at that. This one is a good, good size. So we're going to dig down. We really want to get the stipe and everything here. There we go. Boom. Look at that. Another beautiful Matsutake mushroom here in the northwest. Tricholoma magna la verde or Tricholoma murialinum. This is a uh, wonderful culinary mushroom. They're really kind of rubbery. When you go to cut the stem, it's going to squeak a little bit because it's really kind of a rubbery, dense mushroom. And I find that these hold up really well in a roast, a uh, pork roast or a beef pot roast. So two beautiful little matsutake buttons. And so another thing about matsutake that you might know about is that they've got a unique smell. They've got a very unique smell. So once you've smelled matsutake and you know what they smell like, you will never forget that smell. And this, gosh, it's hard to describe the smell. A lot of mushrooms for me are hard to describe. People will be like, it smells like cucumbers. And I'm like, I do not smell a cucumber. David Aurora says that they smell kind of like red hots and dirty socks. And if I have a good enough imagination and I squint my eyes just enough, yeah, I can smell that. That's good. That's it. So it's got kind of a musty smell to me, honestly. They kind of smell, gosh, a little bit like sweet mothballs to me. I don't know. Some people really love these. Some people try them and they're just not the biggest fan of them. But, uh, but they're always exciting to find because the Japanese variety of these, Tricholoma Matsutake, that grow near Nagano and Hiroshima. They grow on the west slope of this certain mountain range and they can fetch like $100 a mushroom. So... Um, it's kind of a tradition that's sort of dying, but they still they still really value these in Japan, and so commercial pickers will pick these, and uh, these end up in markets around the world. These ones that are growing right here in the Northwest, but these would fetch about twenty dollars a pound from a buyer, um, and they would probably sell them for fifty or sixty dollars a pound. But these ones are going to come home with me. And How's it going everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard here with Mushroom Wonderland on YouTube and Instagram. And I'm in western Washington right now, about uh, 300 feet above sea level. It's a cold, rainy December day here on this log. And would you look right here? And what we have here is a pretty popular wild edible mushroom here in the northwest. Look, it's got this kind of dimpled cap. It's sort of darker right in this, right in the disc. That's the center of the cap. This margin gets pretty thin and it's a little bit ruffly. Right here, there's a, another one trying to grow right there. But uh, these do like growing on the dead wood and they are mycorrhizal. So this, I'm gonna try to get it off of here so you can see the whole stem base. But this mushroom is known as the winter chanterelle or the yellowfoot chanterelle. This one's not showing the most yellow of feet. And uh, this is a great edible mushroom. It's actually not even related to the golden chanterelle. This is a completely different genus. This is Craterellus tubeformis. Uh, we've got a bunch more of the Craterellus tubeformis. The uh, winter chanterelle, or the golden foot, or the yellow foot chanterelle. So see how yellow that foot looks down here, very bright colored. And these are uh, pretty gold and kind of funnel shaped. So uh, we've got quite a few of them growing in this little patch. I'm definitely taking these because I do think they're really good and uh, these are an exciting fun edible late season mushroom here in the PNW. And I hope you all have an amazing new year and we will see you on the next episode. Much love everybody. Thank you.